cause by supporting our law enforcement agencies, by informing ourselves on current issues, by voting regularly and wisely, and by honoring the rights of other people. And I'll finish with a quote from Martin Luther King. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Thank you. Amen. Hold on, let me another Chris in. Hello? Chris? Do you hear us? Chris, you just came in? Yes. You hear us? Okay. I do. Okay, great. And um, all right, and moving right along. Thank you very much, Mr. Fell. That was charming. That was lovely. And let us not forget our four way test. Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And we have our six areas of peace. I think you all know those. And now I'd like to ask if we have any guests. Do we have any guests here today? Any guests? Guests? Going once, going twice, okay. <laughs> visiting Rotarians. Any visiting Rotarians or Rotaractors? Okay, uh, Diane, I know you have some announcements to give. Do you want to take the floor? Certainly, thank you, Marsha. Hello, everybody. I have several announcements to make. The first being that the bills have been out to you guys now for a month and not everybody's paid up. We need you to pay your bill. All right. Currently, the, if, if you don't have the bill or you need to see it, send an email to Terry. Otherwise, the payments have to now be mailed to Terry's home because the post office is boarded up. Ah. Okay, any questions? If you're having a problems paying the bill, let Terry or I know and we'll see what we can do to work with you. But we do need to get the bills paid. So thank you for your cooperation. Secondly, last week, uh, I told you that we have access to rotary face masks. They're cotton. They're $7 each. They're blue in color with the Rotary International logo on them. If you are interested in purchasing one, send me an email and I will put in an order. Um, third, we handed out two scholarships this week to two university high school uh, graduating seniors. Uh, but one is going on to UCLA, the other one's going on to Merced. Um, and uh, we will have some further detail about them in our next newsletter. Um, okay, June 20th is our non-demotion party from 7 to 8.30. There will be an announcement coming out shortly. But on uh, June 19th, District 5280 is hosting the district conference on Zoom. And one of the potential um, prizes that can be earned is based upon a master of mix mixology. So you have to mix a drink, a unique drink, and explain it on video, send it into the district, and you could win a prize. I'm sure there are some of you out there that are very good, like Chris, at mi mixing cocktails. <laughs> um, finally, uh, Gordon was the only one that responded last week, but if you're interested in being concerned, Considered for the District 5280 Humanitarian Trip next year, please just send me uh, a, a quick email. There's nothing, um, you're not committing to it, you're just saying you have an interest in possibly uh, participating. And that's all I've got. Thank you. Okay. Diane, Diane, I have a question on that uh, um, drink that mixed drink thing. I have a specialty uh, up at a cabin during the summer. It's called a peach daiquiri. Who do you send that to? The district? District 5280. You can send it to Tori. Oh, okay. You have to do a video making it. Oh, you do? Oh. 
Yeah, it's not, it's not a recipe. You actually have to perform. <laughs> Can we bring, bring in professional help? <laughs> I, I'm sure Diane, you can. I have a question. Yes. Diane, I have a yes. question. Uh, Mark sent out a, a, a message the other day that Esther Leon was being interviewed on the radio. Do we know what that was about? Uh, I think that's more a question for Mark. Okay. Mark, do well, we know what that uh, was about? It was, they were interviewing people uh, in the Hancock Park area that, um, oh. you know, after the worst of the looting and what they thought, they just happened to, she just happened to say, well, this is um, a cantor whose name is Esther, and my ears perked up. Um, <laughs> oh, and they interviewed great. her for about five minutes on KNX 1070. Wonderful. Okay. So, well, there's UCLA in case anybody forgot. And now it's time for good news. Does anybody have any good news to share? I started, I'll start off because I remember I told you then in, in Uganda in our medical center that they delivered the premature twins and everything mm -hmm. and, uh, about six weeks ago. And those little twins are putting on weight and doing, um, doing, uh. so that's, that's my good news. And um, does anybody else have any some good news about anything going on in their personal life, uh, in their um, uh, with their, with their families? Anybody any more babies or grandbabies coming up? Anything like that? Well, I can share with you our office is moving from our current location to Kitty Corner across the street. <laughs> And as a result, I don't have enough room on the walls there for all my baseball memorabilia. Mm -hmm. So it's all in this one room behind me and on the floor, and I've got to start putting it up on the walls. And uh, I guess the good news is that my wife, Rose, has said it has to stay in this room and it won't venture out. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you need a bigger house with a bigger home office. Apparently. <laughs> Ron, I've got a special portrait of Ted Williams you can have if you'd like. I've got four Ted Williams in, uh, okay. in our, and uh, I, I love, he's my favorite player, but I just don't know where I'm going to put anymore. And Mark, your hand is up. Do you have something you want to... Well, I was going to say I'm thankful. As most of you know, I've, we've had a little uh, health issue with my mother that I drove up to uh, San Francisco uh, to be with her. And as of yesterday, um, looks like she's turned the corner and uh, uh, the, the uh, therapy that's been prescribed is working well and she's going to be doing better. Thank you. But Wonderful. also for uh, Chris, Chris, this was the uh, birthday present that I got my 65th birthday from my close friend, Jim Turkin. I don't know, wait a minute. Let me, let me see if I can turn off the, uh, the, uh, virtual, the virtual here. Um, hold on one second here. That's an original Don Drysdale baseball card. Oh, wow. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, oh, let me see, do it again. Ah, is that a rookie card or is that just one of? That's a rookie card. Thanks, he's in control of this. Man. Good for you. That's a nice one. Isn't that great. I, yeah. I had one of those. Uh, my mother threw them all away when I left <laughs> <for> college. <laughs> <laughs> I have a huge your mother? John Drysdale portrait out in the hall, uh, signed and. Uh, you know, when I was growing up in the 60s, you know, uh, he was, what, 6'5"? And the thought, you know, you messed with him, he put the ball in your ear. Yeah. So. Okay. Anybody else yeah. have anything okay. they want to share? Okay. Well, now, I'm not sure that uh, our speaker is on online yet. I haven't seen him. I haven't seen Ron. Uh, there's 25 of us here. Oh, yeah. Be and 
do you, do you see the speaker yet? Well, we can still talk until they they arrive. Yeah. I have 26, but I don't know which one I have that you don't. I have 26 also. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. I have 26 people on, and there's nobody in the waiting room. So, um, and let's see. Marsha, Ed Jackson seems to be dropping on and off again as usual. Yeah, yeah, he's having trouble in Culver City. Brian, then you saw the email where I sent her the uh, the information, right? Yes, but th this oh. is a little bit earlier than we normally go on. Oh, oh, okay. So I normally tell the speakers to be on between twelve forty-five and one, and, oh. and 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 then we uh, anyway. So we're we're a little bit early. It might be my fault. Oh. Uh, Okay. Perhaps I should change my communication a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, I'm looking at something here trying to. Um, how did Westwood fare? Oh, we have 27 now. Oops. 27 people now. Who? Somebody just came on. Oh, that was I can, me, Marcia. I, I was wondering how Phil did during the riots and how Westwood in general did. Westwood did. Westwood did uh, fairly well. There, there was a few stores that got broken into, but like no mass looting. Many, many of the stores have boarded up their windows. I put cardboard up on the inside and outside of my store. I'm not really a high, vo high value target. There's nothing like you can steal and sell quickly. Um, but we had National Guard here for three days. I think they'll be here another night. And it's pretty easy to secure Westwood. Um, there's only so many roads in and so many roads out. But, you know, every, everyone's on, everyone is, especially for Saturday's protest, that's the one that's making us all a little bit nervous. Um, there is another protest on campus today at one o'clock. We think they're just coming down to the police station on campus and no further, but um, so we're, we're, everyone's a little bit nervous. Um, I'm hoping that this, this blows over peacefully soon. But uh, so far, most of the stores had very little damage. A few stores, like I said, I think a couple of drug stores, they, they got a little bit of stuff, but they, but they weren't ransacked. But uh, so far, so good. Good. Okay. Good. Glad to hear it. Okay. And does anybody have any um, other um, announcements they wanted to make? I just I just want to say I kind of like the idea you have the extra time for us to exchange thoughts between us. That, that's very nice. Oh, coming on early at 12? Well, you know what? We usually people start showing up at 12 when we're actually having an in-person meeting. So that's why I just thought I'd come on at 12. Just so people could talk. Michael yeah. Newman, that's one impressive beard. <laughs> I can't hear you. I was going to say, as far as Westwood goes, we. Can you hear now? Yeah. Yeah, Westwood, the Target, and um, Ralph's, they boarded up. And uh, it's pretty clear, you know, UCLA will be pr probably protected, whether openly or secretly, by the National Guard because they have the leading science centers. In fact, that's one of the reasons, you know, the students put, a black student organization put the initial um, demonstration together, but by Monday night or the night before, they had gone all over social media canceling it. Uh, they, they said they weren't aware of all the complications and things that they had to do. And so that the majority of people that came to the UCLA Westwood area were not even part of the initial um, gathering that was to take place. And, and with all the science and the studies going on for, uh, you know, the virus and the uh, possible uh, Medications we may get, I think it's going to be pretty well guard, guarded for a long time. That's interesting. 
Dr. Jane. Well, I was, you know, just getting burnt out in the news and I was trying to go like a whole, it's all day kind of not looking at the news or anything, just try to chill out and was riding my bike and doing other things. And uh, then I came in at about, well, four o'clock my time, maybe. Oh. Whose phone is that? Can you answer the phone? Oh, anyway, um, and I turned it on, and there, there they were, CNN in Westwood, right in front of the, the uh, right, in, right at you, in Westwood Village there, you know, as soon as I turned it on. <laughs> we're in my whole family, you know, like, you know, we walk into Westwood all the time, you know, and, um, you know, just right by there, so immediately called her and called my friend and I see how she's doing. Everybody's fine. But I can't see Westwood right on the news there. But I'm watching this one. If I look weird, I, it's because I'm watching this one corner of my screen to see, waiting for a new uh, person to come on board here. You guys can talk because we <laughs> the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is there's too many and you can only talk one at a time. Terry, uh, what time do you want the speaker on uh, next week? Uh, Kelly. I don't think you should be addressing it to me. Probably uh, Brian or Oh, Brian, running. yeah, Brian, yeah. What time you want Kelly on? She's she's calling me in a little while. Normally, we're not ready to start until about one o'clock, but we we finished up all of our business earlier today. So, okay. tell her I, one o'clock. Okay, or or or, or maybe uh, maybe quarter of one to be ready. Quarter one. Yeah, I think that's good. That, okay. that gives her more time to, to talk about what she really wants to talk about and have time for questions. Hey, Brian, I'm still working on John McNeil. Um, uh, he's, Terrific. He's finishing up his class, and my grandson um, has a, a project on the landing at Normandy, so he's going to interview him for his sixth grade uh, uh, program that he has to do oh that would be spectacular yeah yeah john is uh, if you go on uh, on the uh uh you know go to the web page and just you know on uh, uh google or one of them just just put in uh, omaha beach john mcneil you get a whole bio on him he's very very interesting career okay. Okay, I'll get him. Looking forward to it. Okay. Hey, hey Brian. Yes. Um, as a speaker chair, you know what I'd love to see? If we could arrange it through the uh, uni high principal, Claudia Middleton. Um, I'd love to get those two students that are getting that scholarship from us and just, you know, have them on Zoom for 15 minutes and find out what they're going to do and, and uh, what their career paths are and uh, what they think about all of this and so forth. Hey, Mark. Hi, we um, have an iPad that just joined us. Who is that? It just says iPad. What is your name? Looks like Jim Myers coming on there. Oh, maybe Jim Myers. It just says iPad. Oh, Jim, hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. I just wanted to make sure you weren't some uh, a Zoom hacker. <laughs> you know, it just said iPad on there. That's why I try to have everybody identify themselves. <laughs> how you doing, Jim? I'm doing fine. How about you? Doing, doing well. We're just kind of waiting for our speaker, just kind of shooting the breeze here. I did want to ask you, Mark, about they've had a bunch of changes. Did you want to say something again, Mark? You have your hand up. Uh, uh, you, you can un take my hand down. That was from before, but Tom was going to ask me a question, I think. Oh, hey, Tom, please ask a question. 
Yeah, Mark, I want to know more information about those two uh, people that you just mentioned, because I'm the program chair next year. So I'll be trying to line up programs. Well, I think I can just give you a little bit of background. You know, the club for many years um, awarded oh. a, a scholarship Open. to a deserving yeah. student. Open. Community high. And um, then last year we started it up what again. And I dealt with Claudia. Um, it, it, and Claudia is the principal. And, and I, I just told Claudia, you know, not necessarily the valedictorian, but somebody close to the valedictorian, but somebody that, you know, uh, the valedictorian gets all the awards and everything. I said, somebody else maybe that, you know, is deserving as well. She gave us a great student last year, really impressive. So this year I just handed that over to Diane um, and Diane made all the arrangements and, and worked with Claudia to identify two students. Take our picture. Yes. How about Zoom? Uh, Mark, I want to ask you a question. Uh, John Huco was saying the other night, I was on, on a meeting and he was the guest speaker, um, about there's been a change in like the grants, uh, the global grants, and that something about, I, I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but districts aren't matching or something anymore. Right, or, effective July 1st for any global grant that is, has not been approved. Mm-hmm. Um, they will no longer grant, they no longer will match the cash, other contributions, 50 cents on the dollar. Uh, they're only going to uh, match the district designated funds, 100%, you know, dollar for dollar. Um, and I, I think it has to do with these global grants have gotten very uh, popular. And particularly, there was a huge influx up with them in, with uh, COVID-19 grants all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I think it kind of outstripped the uh, foundation's funds. They saw it coming. Mark, is that going to affect the humanitarian projects each year? It sure will, because the humanitarian oh, okay. uh, uh, global grants have not even been put in play yet. You know, they haven't mm -hmm. identified the exact projects they want to do. Um, so. Yeah, it sure will. It will diminish the amount of funding that matching funding that we get from the Rotary Foundation uh, and probably either lower the total number of grants or lower, lower the total funding per grant. Okay. Mm. Uh, Marsha? Yes. In response to Mark, I can ask the two recipients of the scholarships this year to uh, speak next week. Um, and it, it came through someone by the name of Paula Van Orden. She took it over for the principal. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if everybody's okay with that, I'll ask them to, uh, to appear next week. Yeah, to speak Great. for just, um, a few minutes, you know, because we have a, a speaker to come mm -hmm. up. Next sure. Speak for like, you know, five, five, ten minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Sure. Good. That would be wonderful. Ed will be the, um, the actual president for the day. I think we're going to go through my Zoom, but he'll be the president for the day. So if you can send me their names so I can make a card or something, you know, for them. Will do. Okay. I want to thank Mark Rogo for his compass mask. They're the most comfortable masks. My pleasure. If anybody needs more, let me know. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> what was it? A mask. Compass mask. Okay. I was just double checking myself, looking through my e Oh, here she is. Here she is. Christina. She's joining us now. Christina. Christina, can you hear me? Christina, you there? It's probably a mute. Yeah, Christina, you may have to unmute yourself. Oh, wait, where'd she go? She disappeared. Um, Oh, here she is. Hi, can you hear me? 
Christina. Yes. Hello, Hi. everyone. How Hi. are you? Good, thank you. And Brian, take over uh, from here talking to you. Brian? Oh, uh, hi, Christina. Brian Whitney here. Is uh, is Ron ready to go? He should be joining um, right before one. Okay. It is before one. All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll give his intro since I'm sure he already knows the information. Um, so uh, Ron Ron is the 19th controller of the city of Los Angeles. He was elected in 2013, and again in 2017. Uh, he serves as a watchdog for taxpayers at City Hall, uh, makes sure public dollars are spent efficiently and effectively. Uh, he's also the paymaster, auditor, and chief accounting officer for the City of Los Angeles. Uh, Mr. Galpern oversees a team that conducts independent audits, manages the city payroll uh, and spending, uh, reports on city finances, uh, pursues fraud and waste, uh, and works to create a more transparent accountable and modern city for its residents. So uh, Mr. Galpern, uh, the floor is yours when you join. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this pop-up yet. Yeah. Christina, right. I was excited to see Christina. <laughs> I'll let him know, let me see. Okay, um, Christina um, has some slides to share. Can we release the content oh. so she can put her content up? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm stopping the share. Or I can bring it up once he starts talking and his remarks. Makes more sense for him. Make sure yours can pop up real quick. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can just test it for a second. Yeah, okay, it's working. It okay. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> Hi, dear. Perfect. Um, one of the things that I, I read today that will pertain to our speaker is I heard there was something with uh, reducing funding on the police today. So, uh, and that, that just came from the mayor's office. So I, I just saw the headline. Um, so boy, there, there must be a lot going on in your office, Christina. Yes. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do anything. Jim. Well, uh, Christina, is there anything you'd like to say to our club? Uh, that's the Westwood Village Rotary. Uh, we've got 29 people on. Um, how long have you been with the, the controller's office? Um, since January. So I'm pretty new to the team, part of his community engagement uh, team here in the office. And we're so excited to have the controller here. I know we were originally scheduled to come in March in person, but at least thanks to, you know, technology like Zoom, we can all meet together virtually, even yeah. in the middle of a pandemic. Right. Well, and thank you for, uh, for setting this up. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Well, there's one more piece of good news that all of us are still healthy, haven't gotten the uh, the virus or anything. Amen. <laughs> Christina, does the controller take private accounts like those of us who are desperately out of control? Uh, no, I, I just work with community groups. I was afraid of that. <laughs> but if you ever had any questions, um, you can also email me. So for example, if time's up for the meeting, you still have questions, um, I can put my email in the chat and you can email me directly and then our office will get back to you. Well, if That's very nice. Thank you. Past 1.30, I can, I can stay on for a while and keep the meeting open if you and, and um, the controller are, you know, willing to stay past 1.30 if there's more quest any more questions or anything. Okay, I'll let him know. Christina, do, do you want to jump off and see if he, uh, if, uh, if he has an issue getting on? Yeah, let me, let me do that for a bit. Thank you. Alrighty. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh. 
That's okay. I just double checked my email to make sure I gave, <laughs> gave him the right uh, login. Oh, here he is. He's here. He's here. Great. Hello. Hello. Are you hello, hello. Ron? Do you, oh, there you are. I see you. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm great. I am here. How are you? <laughs> Good. We're, we're, we're doing well. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we already did your intro, and then there was a long pause. So we've been building up. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're very anxious. <laughs> building suspense I, uh, for your talk. I think like, like so many of us, my, my life is a, uh, a series of Zoom calls. Yes. So I just, I just finished one up, and, and, uh, and here we are. So, uh, well, uh, should I just uh, go for go it? Ahead. Yes, okay. go ahead. Well, first of all, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to uh, be a part of this. And um, uh, I look forward to the uh, time in the not too distant future where we can actually do this uh, in person. It has been a hard three months for so many people in our city, uh, in our state, in our country, uh, throughout the world. Uh, I, I don't need to tell you about uh, the, the tremendous loss that we've had in terms of life uh, uh, from COVID-19, more than 100,000 people across the country, uh, 2,400 of our uh, neighbors and families and, and friends here in Los Angeles. And then uh, just as we were beginning to uh, open up, uh, at least uh, tentatively in a little bit, uh, we have uh, also seen the, the aftermath of the, of the terrible uh, killing of George Floyd in, in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And um, it's opened up... Uh, a lot of wounds in our in our city and in our country, uh, and and really reminded us of how much work uh, we all have to do for a more equitable and a more just uh, future for for everybody and for the next generations. And uh, we've also seen uh, uh, peaceful protesting, uh, and then we've also seen, unfortunately. Uh, less than peaceful uh, vandalism in parts of our city and the curfews that have resulted. And so these are, are very much challenging times. And so the fact that you're getting together in this format uh, virtually, I think is a real testament to, uh, to you, first of all, as individuals, uh, to Rotary, uh, to our resilience uh, as, uh, uh, as Angelinos, as Californians, as Americans, and this is a period of time that we will get through and uh, we'll hopefully learn some important lessons uh, moving forward that uh, can strengthen us uh, into the future. So in the few moments that we've got together, I, I wanted to uh, share with you uh, three things. First of all, uh, looking at how the city of LA is responding to the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, and then uh, uh, of course now linked with some of that is, uh, uh, the protest that we've been having uh, here in Los Angeles. Uh, the second is uh, an update on the financial situation of the city. Uh, I wish I could say that that part of my conversation is going to be chocked full of good and happy news, but uh, it's, uh, it's a difficult uh, uh, future that we're facing, at least uh, in the immediate future in terms of our, uh, of our finances. And then I want to talk about uh, the impact uh, on the uh, business community uh, of COVID-19 and then what we've most recently been experiencing and, and some resources that are available for that. So first, let me begin by talking about uh, the, um, uh, the response of our city. And uh, our many city departments uh, are very hard at work uh, constantly. Uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, response to COVID and so much more. Uh, my own department is perhaps one of the more exceptional ones in that we're able to do pretty much everything remotely. We planned for this a number of years ago in anticipation of a uh, possible earthquake, and uh, we didn't realize that uh, our need to go remote would be uh, for this reason. And uh, it's actually been very successful, I'm pleased to say. But uh, it's not so simple, of course, to be a, a police officer remotely or a, uh, or a firefighter or a sanitation worker. And so those people are really putting themselves on the line each and every single day for us. Uh, we've got uh, 30 testing sites in LA, although some of them unfortunately had to be closed uh, temporarily. 
uh, including Dodger Stadium, which has a, a capacity for 6,000 tests a day. Uh, altogether, there have been uh, something like 630,000 plus tests. Uh, this was as of June the 2nd, so that number is a little bit higher right now. 88% uh, of those uh, were positive. Uh, we've got rec centers that have been serving as homeless shelters. Uh, that um, uh, is one that uh, has lots of inherent uh, complexities involved with it. Uh, not everybody wants to go to a shelter or to a, or to a uh, rec center. There were concerns about uh, uh, many of our homeless uh, gathering in such a way that could then spread COVID. Uh, and it's obviously not a permanent solution of any sort. But uh, the problem of homelessness, and, and I've been a critic in many ways of how the city has handled it, quite frankly, uh, has only been exacerbated during this time of COVID. We can talk about, uh, about that issue as well. Uh, we've got senior meals, uh, many more being distributed than ever before uh, by our city's uh, Department of uh, Aging, but also now in partnership with quite a number of different restaurants uh, and other organizations. Uh, there have been actions taken regarding uh, landlord-tenant relations in the city of LA uh, and business assistance, which I'll get into uh, in a little bit uh, later time. Now, uh, on my own website, I've created a number of different resources. One is a, a COVID resource hub, and uh, you may be seeing that appear on your uh, screen as we speak. Actually, Christina Ibarra, who's uh, with my office, is online. Uh, right now as well and she's putting that up for you to see and uh, in that dashboard we look at daily stats uh, broken down uh, community by community in Los Angeles uh, broken down by age broken down by ethnicity uh, and geography uh, and uh, of course as we know uh, the older you are the more uh, likely that impact is to be on you and unfortunately we also know that our communities of color are the ones that are more heavily impacted uh, by COVID. And all of that is updated on a daily basis. Um, we've also included information on stimulus checks. And uh, this is based on economic data and data that we got also from IRS, um, not individualized data, of course, but uh, it really tells you community by community where are the stimulus checks going? And that's based on what the income levels are in the communities, uh, as well as the density within those communities. Um, we've also included resources for uh, 16 different categories with hundreds of different resources out there. And there, there are a lot of websites with COVID-related uh, resources, but sometimes it can be overwhelming. So we wanted to uh, break it down by uh, help if you are a freelancer, an artist, if you're a small business person, if you're an employee, if you're a job seeker, if you're a homeowner, if you're a renter, and you can click on any of these boxes here and get information that is specific to you. Of course, many people fall into multiple categories uh, and you can click on multiple boxes. There are hundreds of resources that are there as well. And uh, what I also identified uh, as a tremendous need during this time is food. Uh, and even before this began, we had a high level of uh, food insecurity in Los Angeles, that being people who really cannot afford to buy uh, groceries and can't afford to get uh, fresh, uh, uh, fresh meats and fish and vegetables. And uh, what I sought to do first was to create a map looking at all of the uh, LA food banks and uh, food pantries and distribution centers we expanded that to the county, and then a couple weeks after that to all of California. Uh, so what you're looking at now has 1,800 food resources across the state in pretty much every county in uh, California. Uh, and I'm, I'm gratified to say that people are using this. I'm also very deeply distressed to say that it has become the most popular feature on our website. Uh, that tells me something profound uh, and profoundly disturbing about the current state of uh, food insecurity in our, in our city and in, in our nation. But uh, if you know of people who can avail themselves of these resources, uh, there's also uh, opportunities for people to volunteer at some of these places. And uh, that information 
is, uh, is all part of what this site is about. Uh, I'll turn to talking about the uh, budget for the city of LA. And we operate on a, a fiscal year basis. Uh, so our year goes from the 1st of July to the 30th of June. Uh, when uh, COVID struck, uh, we were mostly through our fiscal year and most of our revenues had come in. Uh, but uh, we have seen a precipitous drop off in revenues uh, since this all began. And uh, from our original uh, estimate of what would come in by the end of the year, we've had to reduce that by at first 230 million, but it's, it's going to be probably 270 million dollars or so when, when all is said and done. Uh, travel and tourism uh, has um, been devastated. Uh, a lot of retail has been devastated, uh, along with sales tax uh, from it. Uh, also, um, uh, there are many people who have uh, postponed payment of uh, property taxes uh, pursuant to uh, uh, being allowed to do so without penalty. And, uh, and so various revenues have just simply not been coming in. Um, we will be able to uh, withstand that in that we had uh, built a relatively strong um, uh, reserve fund and budget stabilization fund, but that can dry up rather quickly. And so we also have been making uh, predictions best as we can for what will happen in the coming fiscal year. Nobody knows for sure. A lot of it is a guessing game, uh, to be frank. Uh, even though in the past our, our uh, guesstimates were always extremely accurate, I can't say for sure that that will be uh, true now. So uh, it could be as much as 600 million less than anticipated, maybe even more, depending upon uh, the pace of recovery. Um, as a result, uh, the mayor proposed a, a placeholder budget, uh, which is gonna be uh, looked at uh, on a constant basis, uh, proposed furloughs for uh, 16,000 uh, employees. And, uh, uh, we are going to see some changes to that. The mayor uh, announced in the last day, various members of the city council, that they're going to uh, look at uh, funding for public safety and uh, at some reductions in some of what was originally slated for the police department and for public safety for some other, um, uh, for other uh, community uh, purposes. And uh, those have not yet uh, been identified yet. Uh, but uh, work is being done on that uh, even as we speak at this very moment. Um, we've received some money from the federal government um, uh, for, uh, for FEMA, uh, but the largest chunk actually is monies that we receive from the federal government that can only be used for COVID-related purposes. Uh, we expect to get up to $745 million for that, which sounds like a lot of money, but uh, at the same time, uh, it has limited uses, and uh, there's been a lot of costs associated with all the free testing and uh, with um, uh, with uh, the uh, uh, the impact that this has had on medical services and on our rec and parks and so many other departments of the city of LA. Um, impact of business, um, uh, I'm sure as many of you know, many of you being in business, um, uh, since mid-March, a staggering 33 million Americans have filed for unemployment. Uh, the uh, unemployment rate uh, in the city of Los Angeles, depending upon how you calculate it, uh, anywhere between 20.7% and 24% uh, plus, uh, hitting our communities of color uh, and our low-income communities in a particularly hard way. Uh, those working uh, in the service industry being a very hard hit. Uh, millions of businesses shuttered in the United States and hundreds of thousands in the city of LA alone. And so uh, uh, many of these will open up, but many of these uh, will probably not open up again. Uh, we don't yet know for sure, uh, although there are various efforts being made to help those businesses, everything from the CARES Act and the SBA loans, which I'm sure you're familiar with. We put all this information on our website as well, and it's on a lot of other websites. The EIDL, the uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, uh, the Triple P or PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, we know that it hasn't been um, uh, available uh, for everybody, but it's been helpful for many. Uh, the state has a uh, small business finance center, uh, but uh, that's only about $50 million, which comes and goes very, very quickly 
in a state the size of California. Uh, there's CalCap, which is the California Capital Access Program for uh, small business. Um, there's also a governor's task force on jobs and recovery, which was announced in uh, mid-April. Uh, we have another uh, series of um, task forces, one that the county put together and several that the mayor has been putting together to look at recovery uh, as well. Uh, on the local level, we have the uh, LA Care Corps, uh, and you can go to EWDD's website, the Economic and Workforce Development Department of the City of LA, for information on that. Uh, small Business Microloan Program, I'd like to say that it's been a, um, a great success so far, but it's been a slow going. Um, I'm actually working with, uh, with a number of people, though, to really ratchet it up. Uh, and what we are seeking to do is to uh, raise a bunch of money, and the county's kicking in a, a bunch of it, uh, which is going to be used for loan guarantees, essentially, so that private lenders put their money into a fund, and then that fund then lends to uh, small businesses in the form of microloans. And uh, the idea is that we know that many of those loans will be defaulted upon, unfortunately. So if we want those private lenders to lend, uh, the best way to do that is to get them to um, uh, feel some sense of guarantee for that. And uh, we're hoping that that will be launched in a significant way over the course of the next uh, month. And um, there are many other efforts that are uh, afoot and uh, a lot of work that will have to be done. Um, let me just conclude by saying that uh, I, I uh, think of myself as an optimist. And uh, uh, I, I love this great city and this great state and this country that we live in. And uh, uh, we have this uh, ability to constantly reinvent ourselves. Uh, I know for myself, uh, I'm the first in my family to be born in this country. Uh, my parents were both immigrants who came uh, not speaking uh, any English at all, except for what they picked up from some movies. Uh, and, uh, and they were able to realize that uh, American dream, as it were, for myself and uh, for uh, uh, our family. But I, I want to make sure that we do everything that we can to make sure that is the case for, for every family and for uh, generations to come. And uh, while we're going through some challenges, I think we'll have some really interesting lessons that we learn. Uh, I'm seeing the growth in uh, telemedicine. Imagine so many people who previously weren't able to go to a doctor or couldn't take the time off who now can do that uh, uh, on, on their own phone. And what a difference that could make to, uh, to people's health. Uh, the growth in virtual and augmented reality, uh, making local government more accessible. Um, in the past, you would always have to uh, schlep down to City Hall if you wanted to uh, have your, your say in front of the council. Uh, now uh, there's opportunities to do that virtually, and I hope that that continues. Um, new types of businesses that are going to be uh, created out of this. Uh, I know there's a huge demand right now for, uh, for ZJs uh, or, uh, or people who can be Zoom uh, DJs, essentially. Um, I think that's a, a heck of a great job right now. Um, opportunities for remote learning. Uh, and uh, uh, even many of our universities, I think, are going to really expand in doing that. And, and lessons that we're learning with more flexible working conditions and people working from home occasionally, uh, and what that can do for people's mental health, what that can do for, uh, for reducing traffic and, and uh, providing people with more flexibility uh, to really be with their families as well. So uh, I, I think if we focus on some of the good that can come out of this, uh, then, uh, then we will we'll emerge stronger. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with you this afternoon. And uh, happy to open it up for uh, uh, a couple of questions before I run off to yet another Zoom call after this. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, and thank you so much to uh, Christina also for uh, uh, for all the great work that you're doing uh, in the controller's office. Yeah, I, I have a question. Sure. Um, Ron, one of the first things I think with the assessor's office is property tax. Yes. And look, looking at the, the debt the state's going to have and also the city and the county, what do you see in your crystal ball as far as our property taxes, whether Prop 13 will go commercially or both commercially and residential will be eliminated and things like parent-child or 
transferring your house from here to Riverside County and the, the things that we're allowed to do under the current proposition structure? Sure. Uh, well, that's uh, a lot of questions packed into one. Uh, what we are seeing right now is a, a reduction in some of the revenues that we're getting uh, from, uh, from property tax. Uh, we, we hope to eventually see most of those monies, uh, but uh, uh, there are some who are having a really tough time in paying their property taxes. Um, and uh, there will no doubt be um, uh, applications for reduction in assessed value. Uh, we're not yet seeing a reduction in, uh, in prices. At least up until now, uh, the amount uh, from a, at least as far as uh, uh, commercial real estate, there hasn't been really enough transfers yet to really see what the impact is going to be in terms of values. Uh, in terms of residential real estate, there's been so little that went on the market that uh, if it was priced right, and if it is priced right, it actually is selling. But we do know uh, that unfortunately, we're probably going to see an uptick in uh, foreclosures over the course of the next six months to one year. Um, it's almost inevitable. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I think that's likely. Um, and there's a lot of uh, small landlords that uh, uh, are not necessarily getting the rent money and uh, are having trouble paying their, their mortgage. It's uh, something that the larger landlords are able to withstand a little bit more uh, easily, at least for a certain period of time. So uh, you're probably going to see um, a reduction in some of the uh, revenues or a reduction in the increase in revenues of uh, property tax. We also have documentary transfer tax, uh, which happens when you have a transfer. Uh, we're seeing fewer transfers and so we'll see fewer um, monies from that. What happens with the uh, attempt in November to uh, change uh, Prop 13? Uh, I think that's anybody's guess at the moment. Um, as many of you know, uh, this uh, is uh, an attempt to institute a, uh, a so-called split role so that you would have reassessment of commercial properties and not of um, uh, uh, residential properties. It would stay essentially the same for residential properties. Um, the purpose of Prop 13 was to protect residential property owners, especially elderly ones who were um, getting priced out of their home uh, all the way back in 1979 when prices were climbing as quickly as they were. And uh, interestingly enough, since then, uh, the burden of overall property tax payments has shifted from uh, commercial to uh, residential property owners because the commercial properties were essentially in many ways frozen in time because when property was transferred within a legal entity, not to get too wonky, uh, it didn't see reassessment. So we're gonna have to see what happens. Um, it could have a, a significant impact on, on revenues uh, uh, to be determined. Thank you. I, I have a question. Um, you, you talked about loans for small businesses. There's a city or this, um, that you know of, is, are they gonna make any like grants available for small businesses? to catch up on rent and some payroll, kind of like the payroll protection program from the, from yeah. the federal government, which, which basically no one I know got it. Maybe, maybe two people I know got them. Yeah. Um, um, there are some uh, small uh, grant amounts that are contemplated. Uh, it depends on how much money is raised for sort of uh, the loan guarantee program. But uh, most of those uh, grants would go uh, more to nonprofits than they would to uh, small businesses, to be honest. Uh, Given the budget outlook uh, that the city of LA has, uh, I wish I could say that there's going to be a lot of that grant money out there uh, for small businesses, but uh, I, I wouldn't be honest if I said that. Uh, so there's attempt, of course, to uh, see much more of that happened uh, out of Washington, DC, uh, but there is a lot of deadlock uh, between uh, House and Senate, between Republican and Democrat. Uh, and so I think you will see more of it uh, but uh, just how much more uh, yet to be determined. Thank you. And I have a question. Um, with that, the Prop 13, I was wondering if I read it right, because in what I got it, the interest rate on it is like 80% uh, or something. It's just like an enormous interest rate. Is that true? What do you mean by interest rate? Well, they say on this Prop 13 of borrowing so many millions of dollars, you know, I forget what the amount is because I haven't seen the document in a while, 
but then the interest rate on it, they said it is some enormous amount. Well, uh, if you're talking about, uh, are you talking about uh, 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 the November ballot, which would revise uh, property tax for Prop 13? Uh, it's not, it's not a prop, it's not, uh, it's not going to be Proposition 13, but it's a revision of Prop 13, okay? Um, and it is going to, uh, for, uh, if it passes, uh, for some commercial properties, it could very significantly increase the property tax they are paying. Um, uh, there are many cases where properties have not been reassessed for a long time. Uh, you look at, for example, uh, you know, Disneyland, uh, that's sort of one example that's uh, often cited. Uh, it's been owned by the same uh, legal entity for uh, many, many years and has not really seen uh, significant increases in, uh, in property tax as a result. So uh, it is true that it would uh, result in some rather uh, hefty increases. Um, there's many arguments on both sides. Uh, those who are commercial property owners uh, argue that uh, if you increase that uh, property tax on commercial property owners, it's just gonna end up getting passed on to the tenants. Uh, and there's, uh, there's some truth to that as well. Uh, the, re the reality though is that um, we have to look at, I think, all of our taxes in California and uh, how, do we, how do we perhaps rethink uh, the way taxes work in that uh, uh, you look at uh, the dependency of the state, um, not on property tax, but the state itself uh, on revenues that come from the top uh, 5%. And uh, it's said that if, uh, if the top 5% catch a cold, then uh, the rest of us get the flu. Uh, in that, uh, uh, on the one hand, the state wanted to really make the burden stronger on those who are most capable of paying uh, and who are high income and high net worth. Uh, but the problem is when you do that, if that sector takes a hit, then our whole budget takes a huge hit as well. We saw that happen a couple of years ago. So it's, uh, 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 and last but not least, it should be noted that we, we have sales tax, but we don't have a tax on, um, on services. Uh, that's very controversial, uh, but we've become much more of, a, uh, of a, um, a service economy. And so do we need to reconsider how we tax uh, uh, and take a holistic look at it? I think sooner or later we do. Mark, do you have a question? Hi, Ron. Uh, well, to make one quick comment on what you said is that we are already the most tax state in the union. So I think rather than revising taxes or looking for new streams of income for the government, that maybe the government needs to tighten its belt and balance its budget. Um, uh, but the question I have for you is that um, uh, as Manhattan has seen in the last four years, there has been a outflow of residents from uh, the central city of New York. And um, and I've heard rumors about the same thing in Los Angeles, mostly because of the high cost of living here, but now because people realize that if they're going to work remote, they can re work remote from anywhere as long as they have access to uh, internet and a laptop. Um, have you had any population trend information, that demographic information that would indicate that, that Los Angeles or California as a whole is um, uh, maybe losing uh, population? Uh, well, uh, there's a whole variety of different uh, numbers that, that indicate sometimes contradictory trends. Um, uh, one, of, one of the uh, interesting indicators is um, the uh, rental of U-Hauls. And uh, uh, that, that's also a, a very fascinating um, uh, number to look at. And uh, those have indicated that... Uh, that there are a variety of people who uh, have found Los Angeles much too expensive to live in. And uh, I mean, you can rent a one bedroom apartment uh, in Los Angeles and struggle, or you can buy yourself a three bedroom house uh, outside of Las Vegas, uh, which would you rather do? Um, or many other places. Uh, so it's, uh, we have to find ways to, um, to create more housing opportunities. And by the way, more opportunities for people to be owners because most of what's being created right now uh, is rental housing. 
and we have a huge need for that, but what we're also seeing is, is a, a reduction each and each year of the percentage of people who own. And that will ultimately have, I think, a corrosive impact on the social fabric if people don't feel that they can uh, have an ownership interest in, in, in a society. Uh, and that also impacts our neighborhoods. We could talk about what it would take to actually uh, uh, help accomplish that. Um, ironically, um, you hear a lot about uh, wealthy people leaving Los Angeles, uh, but uh, if uh, uh, real estate prices for uh, high-priced uh, homes and condos are any indication, uh, that does not seem to uh, have been occurring. Uh, and, um, and we also have uh, had a lot of uh, different um, uh, industries that are no longer here, but we have uh, some very, very successful entrepreneurs and, and tech businesses. Uh, yeah. Look at the number of Google jobs uh, and young people who are, uh, are making relatively substantial amounts of money. So um, I'm, I'm pretty, um, pretty optimistic that we can continue to hold on to people who uh, who are good earners, and we need to hold on to them because um, they're paying the, the large share of the taxes that, that pay for the many services that we need. Uh, thank you. You know, our time, uh, it's after, a little after 1.30, but I think there's a few more questions. If you could stay on for a few more minutes, I understand if somebody has to go to another Zoom meeting or <laughs> Let's see, I can take, let me hold on a second. Let me just check my, I don't look at my phone. I don't know where I am five minutes from now. Um, well, I know where I am physically. I just don't know where I am Zoom wise. Um, <laughs> hold on a second here. Um, all right, I can take two more. How's that? Who would like to ask a question? Um, just speak up. Can I just make a quick uh, addition on the subject of small business loans? Please. There is a new small business loan program coming oh, nice. probably within the next week it's called main street lending it Ooh. is for small businesses and it is through the federal oh. reserve so banks have been notified they're gearing up to uh, process applications and it should be announced very shortly nancy can and you send that to me thank you for mentioning that um, the PPP loans can also apply for this, but this is also meant for people who missed out before. Thank you for Nancy, bringing that to everybody. That information, Nancy? Yes, as soon as I have details, I will send them to you. Okay, thanks. Okay, and did anyone else have a question? Okay, well, I just wanted to thank so much uh, uh, Mr. Controller, Ron Galperin. <laughs> <laughs> attending the, for coming to the meeting today yes. and Brian did you have any uh, last words for uh, no just wanted to offer my uh, my thanks um, well thank you so very much again for the opportunity to be with you I look forward to seeing you in person hopefully uh, in the not too distant future uh, stay strong stay healthy uh, stay resilient and uh, and thank you for the all that you do um, uh, in, in all the aspects of your life here in Los Angeles. And um, uh, we will, we will uh, grow from this, emerge from it, and uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunities that will, will come forward. Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next week, our president for the day, will be past President Ed Jackson on June 11th. And we will be talking about a look inside the virtual Bruin bubble. And our guest speaker will be Kelly, how do you say that? You know, you, Perez, okay? Keiko. What? Inwe Perez. Perez, yes. <laughs> and talking about UCLA that we all go with love. And so anyway, so until next week, if I can stay on, if people would just want to talk or anything for a while. And uh, let's remember to appreciate, as we always do, our, you know, frontline workers here, doctors and nurses and first responders. And I know that uh, we have um, just allocated some more money for lunches for some of the, the fire department in um, fire departments in um, Westwood Village there. And um, 
life is not getting any easier for any of them, that's for sure. And so until next week, if anybody wants to stay online, we can stay online. I'm good. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see you next week then. Nice to see you, Gwen. Bye. Thank you, Marsha, for taking care of this business. Yeah, thanks, Marsha. Yeah. See you all. Thank you. I'm there and I'm still around. Get some exercise. Good night, everyone. Tom no. Barron, you're still around? Okay. Tom's gone. Michael, you there? Okay, <laughs> I think everybody's signing off. <laughs>